This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. I think it's sort of telling that the Swiss never were invaded, and also the Yugoslavs never were invaded by the Soviets, because this is a damn fine plan. If you've got a an army that's pre-configured for guerrilla warfare, it doesn't have to worry about being surprised at the borders or having its airfields all bombed on the first day of the war, like Poland in 1939. There are a few centers to bomb. And I mean, of course, Tito and Cuisson were probably planning on operating with small units, but why not take this concept further? I, I really see in war games um, how so much time is wasted, or at least expended, uh, coordinating with others when you're gonna do something, and usually it's, you know, attempting to do something big. What if coordination were largely set aside and each soldier were, you know, citizen soldier, I guess, were freed up to just operate within certain parameters by themselves? Or if they want, maybe reach out to other soldiers and form their own groups and decide their own pecking order. This is something to be learned from the Mormons. They say that whenever a group of four Mormons get together, especially in a crisis situation, they will try to decide among themselves at the outset who should be in charge and who should be their second. As anti-authoritarian as I am, it really can streamline things if there's no lack of clarity as to who's in charge. I don't know, would it be better for a government to set this up in advance or for uh, them to just leave it to each individual who they'll pledge their loyalty toward and follow? within this, say, 4,000-man guerrilla army. But soldiers could be uh, incentivized to accomplish, you know, greater things uh, with these sort of ranger-style bounties that you might issue, like, say, you know, um, you know, just go out there and do something to impress us, get proof of it, preferably video, I guess, and then uh, show it to us when you get home and uh, you will receive an appropriate, you know, uh, reward in rank uh, and or cash, possibly other unusual types of rewards that are thinking outside the box. Uh, the more you do, the better it gets, but, you know, ultimately you're fighting for your country's freedom. So this mix of a profit motive and uh, tempered civic nationalism could result in a very effective defensive army. You know, there, there could also be demotions or punishments for actions that result in harm to bystanders or which violate the rules of engagement, which should be, you know, very broad uh, and simple rules of engagement. There shouldn't be, no one should be going through complicated calculations before engaging, right? Uh, you know, in Vietnam, the uh, uh, aircraft, I think, you know, pilots had very strict and probably complicated rules of engagement that really tied their hands, made things difficult, may have cost them the war. Sure, you want to prevent harmful things from happening to good people, but that's got to be covered in a sort of simple set of, of rules. Obviously, I've talked about this many times before. The, an obvious prerequisite to this sort of thing is a lot of weapons freedom in this free country. The average people should have access to relatively heavy weaponry, you know, up to tanks and fighter craft, that kind of thing. You know, should people be able to own B-1 bombers? Well, I find it kind of hard to swallow that idea if they've got the bombs. Uh, they're not, a, you know, violating the zero aggression principle. They don't have weapons of mass destruction. It's a little bit hard for me to, I guess, argue for or against it. But it's a bridge we can cross when we get to it. There's, there's a lot of uh, stations we can exit on this train if it's bound for freedom before we get to that station. Anyway, I imagine this tiny army of gnats that's spread out. Uh, they'd be, you know, into 4,000 different places. They'd be so difficult. Each one of them should easily be able to tie down 10 of the enemy. Who's running around, who's running around chasing them. 
Uh, they would capture the imagination of the, the world in a way that perhaps no other army ever has. And support for it probably would come flowing in from around the world and its numbers would grow. You'd have to have, you know, a few interesting exploits. There'd be a lot of very small exploits. You know, say you're one of these 4,000 soldiers and, you know, I day, your country's invaded and occupied. You have standing orders, if you don't hear from anybody else, to do X, Y, Z. You don't have to consult with anybody. You don't have to get to your base. You just grab, what, you know, whatever light weapons you've got in your closet. You disappear. Maybe it's a secret, you know, who's even in the army. Maybe standing orders are issued to the entire population. <laughs> Maybe in a free country they'd be more like recommendations for how to engage uh, the enemy. Uh, it might simply be orders not to do certain types of war crimes or any war crimes, uh, but encouraging everybody to do X, Y, Z, as well as ABC whatever works best for you. That adds sort of an official slight organization towards something that's otherwise spontaneous and might not even happen. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM Feds don't want you to hear them.